when I was writing the story, one of the first things I did um, is I did the map. I needed to be able to visualise exactly what I was writing about, where they would be going. I didn't want to just write the story and then do the map. One of the first things that I did is I actually went to a website called Random Map Generator, I think it was. Um, and basically you click a button and it generates multiple kind of atlas or world images. And I did dozens of these and I picked out the ones which had the most interesting shape. And then what I did is I took them all on Photoshop and kind of meshed them together, added little chunks of land until I got the outline that I liked the most. And I did about six or seven different earths, if you want, until um, I eventually settled on this one. I saw this one and I thought, that's Einstein, that's how I want it to look. And on my laptop, I'd actually done a map where I'd mapped out what the different territories were, you know, where people lived. So I had that reference on my desk. After that, one of the other things that I did is while I was writing it, I had some transparent paper like this. Um, I did the outline of the map, which I had over the original rough map so that I could see the outline. And then I had a second bit of transparent paper, which I did notes on. So I kind of mentioned the different areas, the different routes, um, you know, the Ridgery Mountains, the Aldwood, um, where Lowberg was, where Bark Tree was, um, where Lake Crewel was, all these different places, um, where all the Drago Wastelands were, um, the Gold Coast, all that. So that I had that on my desk while I was writing and I could see exactly what I was writing about and I didn't accidentally mix up certain bits of geography. Once the story was written though, then I had to get it from this to a slightly neater looking sketch. So what I did is I took the original outline, which I had done. I ended up making a few changes. There were certain parts of the Ridgery Mountains that I wasn't too fond of. I thought they didn't quite work and they were the kind of changes that didn't impact the story at all. It just annoyed me, so it had to go and it had to be changed. Once I'd done the outline, I then took a piece of paper and outlined that on it and then drew it out. For along the coastline, I ended up doing kind of pontillism type thing all the way around it. It just added it and added to it and made it look a lot nicer. It took forever though. I think in total, um, it took me around three hours to do the dots all around the coast. For the trees, I didn't want to use a black pen because otherwise it would have made the whole map look a little bit flat and I wanted some slightly different colours to go with everything. And I knew that I was going to add the cities later on Photoshop. I didn't want to add the cities and then realise it didn't quite work. I thought, you know, just add natural geography at this point. We can add cities and where they are and names and all that later on. And also my handwriting is horrible, so I didn't want that on the map. And I drew out the trees. After that, I scanned it in. Normally I don't like to scan things because the scanner, especially for anything like pencil shading, it tends to completely get rid of it, but because it was the map and it was done in pen, that didn't really matter, and it was just about trying to find the colours. I had been thinking of making the sea blue, but then I thought I want to keep everything in grayscale just because it looks different and I don't really want the sea blue, I'd rather have it in grayscale, so I made the sea a kind of dark mid-tone grey. And then it was just about placing everything in the right place, figuring out how I wanted it laid out, did I want it to go along the side, did I want everything horizontal. And then once I had done that, it went from looking like this, to this. And that's how I made the map of Einstein. <laughs>